Uh, today I'm gonna do a quick little overview of the uh, CME CNC RS again. Uh, after unboxing, I did a, a two or three test prints uh, with the standard uh, profile and settings that were on the website. Um, so I was gonna show you right here. I have matter control hooked up on my little Winbook tablet. These are nice little. $99 tablets at Micro Center, they go on sale sometimes. Um, they run an Atom processor. They're good enough for slicing and controlling a printer. Um, so I'm going to go in here and show you calibration. So I have the uh, I have the calibration settings that were downloaded. This is the calibration script for the Aris. And I'll show you what I can do. I have it loaded as a macro in matter control. So I press control. It's going to go down and it's going to tap all three towers to get the uh, tower Z height. It's going to home each of the towers. It's going to go back down and it's going to do the uh, delta radius by tapping the center and then tapping one of the tower edges. And then it's going to do the Z height just by tapping the Z height. And it's going to home itself. And there it is. That's homing. Uh, if you want to see, I can actually do show the terminal. Okay, and we'll actually show what it does as it's calibrating. And it stops calibrated. It's going to go over. It's going to tap the uh, tower. See it tapped each of the distances. And now it's going to do horizontal radius. And now it's going to do the Z height calibration. And then it commits all those changes to the uh, EEPROM. M17. M105. Okay. And that's, that's setting the temperature. Or checking the temperature. Um, so I'm going to do a preheat. I'm going to preheat it. It's set to, by default to 110. I just loaded the the uh, Aris default settings for matter control, the I and I, uh, and it set it to one one or 210. So we'll let it go to there. Um, I'm going to cut off the video and then uh, I'm going to load the filament. Uh, unfortunately the the load and unload filament are um, kind of causes a problem where it will keep going to 210 degrees and then zero and then 210 degrees and it kind of puts it in a loop and then it crashes. Um, so I'm going to manually feed the filament in through the tube and through the extruder. The uh, yellow PLA that was uh, given to me by CME CNC. I uh, loaded it through the extruder, uh, manually extruded really slowly uh, until it got through the hot end. Um, purged a little bit of the old filament out. Seems to extrude pretty well. And then I loaded uh, some steampunk cube gears. Um, so it's going to give some, show some detail that I can possibly get out of this. And so all I did was the calibration, load the filament, and I'm going to press print. Slicing model. Pretty fast on this little tablet. Okay, it's going to set it to 215. We'll wait 
for it to reach temperature. It heats up pretty quickly, just like in the, a normal cartridge heater would. As you can see, there's a red LED and a blue LED. The red LED means it's heating. I think the LED on this side might be uh, that it's already to temperature. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, the blue LEDs look pretty cool. Shows that it's on. There's a blue LED here. Uh, there's actually a white LED in one of these fan holes. Um, and uh, it's kind of hard to see because my phone won't focus. But uh, you can see there's three, there's three separate fan holes that come out through the main fan shroud and this main fan I'm thinking is actually pulling air past the heat sink the heat, the heat break the cold end um, sucking it through and put forcing it down into the uh, end so, a little dangerous there okay, it's doing its first perimeter layer it's a little stringy, but it should do two of them. Now it's actually doing the gears. The first layer. It's over extruding the first layer, and I don't think it really has to. It's almost too much and it bites to the bed really hard. So I might have to turn that down. It does do a Z lift uh, when it passes a gap, so that's good. It can do some pretty quick infills. Uh, I'm hoping it can go faster. Here's a better close up of it uh, actually printing. Um, that light is kind of bright. But uh, it's printing pretty well so far, and it's pretty quick. Uh, it's doing 5 millimeter retraction at 100 millimeters per second, um, which I think might solve the uh, the stringing issue. But uh, apparently, there's also an extrusion extruder current limiting that I need to fix as well. But um, it should take about an hour to print. Um, can't really see that, but it's should be about an hour and 26 minutes. So, um, uh, based off of my previous prints, um, I don't really have those right here to show you, but um, they they look pretty good. Um, it does look really good when it prints. So, um, let's see how that works. I might do a side by side comparison to see how how the uh, Mendel 90 prints at at the same speed as the the delta and then see if there's a quality difference uh, because of the different moving gantries um, so we'll see how that works uh, thank you for watching it's actually finishing up the print right now and uh, it's done a really good job so far I haven't seen too much stringing the layers look really smooth um, it's doing some fine detail inside there um, uh, overall, uh, really out of the box, you know, a little bit of um, setup on software. I haven't had to do anything really in hardware, um, anything on the printer other than, you know, figuring out how to load the printer. Uh, 
it's it's like night and day difference between this and my Mendel 90. The Mendel 90 was uh, about $800 worth of parts. Probably spent three three months building this. Um, over a year collecting the parts um, from various sources. Um, it prints amazingly um, and it has that giant heated build, build platform and I'm doing exclusively ABS parts but for about five hundred dollars or five to six hundred dollars you get a printer that prints really nicely out of the box so I don't know um, compared to a printer bought simple metal I say it's very comparable uh, to a printer bought simple metal it looks a lot cooler than the printer bought simple metal and it's a lot more portable um, so if you're looking for something I would say for a beginner or somebody that's looking for sub a printer that's quiet and small to put in a classroom or a library um, I, I think this is a great printer for that. For me, it's going to be great to take to maker fairs and shows and uh, demos and open house nights at the uh, at the th uh, maker space. Um, and um, I think they'll get a lot of uh, crowd attention because it's a Delta printer and it does look really nice while it prints. So um, I think it depends on your audience. Um, I loved it. I think I'll be using it a lot, especially since it's super reliable. Um, as long as I don't have any extruder jams with PLA and I can get my settings tuned in, I think this will be a workhorse machine. Um, and really in conjunction with printing ABS parts on my, my Mendel 90, I think this is a good pair to have. Um, one material per printer. So uh, that's it. Thank you.